In this video, I'm going to talk about um, uh, how to calculate a Fourier series um, for a function, a periodic function, f of t. So we're going to start talking again about this um, ODE a double prime, a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equal f of t, where f of t is a periodic function with period capital T. So um, when we have a function like this, um, we want to approximate it using some series, and I'm going to write down a very general series here. I'll write down a very general series. F of t is approximately, now in the example that I did the other day, I only had cosine, sorry, I only had sine terms appearing, but in general, we could have, um, we could have these uh, depend on more than just cosine or sines. We can also have cosine functions. So let's say we start from n equal one, and we're going to go up to a finite n, so that we can use our familiar method of undetermined coefficients on this sum of cosines. And I'm actually not going to be too specific about what the frequency is or what the um, the, the basic period is, and I'll just leave it as omega n. But you can think of that as being um, 2n pi over capital T, where t is the period. So omega n is 2n pi over capital T. And then we'll add to that the sine of n from n equal 1 to capital N of bn sine of omega n of t times t. And then um, and the challenge here is to figure out what are the best a0, an, and bn values to approximate f of t. And we're going to get our inspiration here from vector projections. So let me just do a quick refresh on how vector projection works. Imagine we have some function, sorry, not some function, some vector uh, w. And we'd like to write w in terms of two other vectors, v1. Actually, let me make this a little shorter intentionally. So this one is v1. And let's also have a v2. And the idea is that we want to take v1 and extend it out as far as we need to, and then we'll, we're going to slide v2 around over to here, parallel to it, so that it we find the exact size scaled up. It, I, it's pretty close here, but imagine I had to scale up that v2 to something c2 times v2, and I had to scale up the v1 by c1 v1 to get right there. And if I can do that, then I'll have a perfect sum, right? I'll have, uh, I'll have that w is equal to c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2. And how do I find that c1 and that c2? In the picture, I do it just by rough guess, but we can do it a little bit more formally. Um, And that is, um, we we can use um, dot products to do projections. So in this case, I didn't draw them as perpendicular, but let's just say if v1 and v2 are perpendicular, then we can get away with, well, we use the fact that v1 dot v2 is equal to zero. And what we, want is we want to see one and see two that work. So we're going to say w dotted with v one is going to be c v one plus c one v one plus c two v two. And 
dotted with V1. And then because of that orthogonality, we have C1 V1 dotted with V1 plus C2 V2 dotted with V1. But the second one ends up being zero because we were perpendicular. So not in this example here, but let's say I was much cleverer and I chose my V1 and V2 perpendicular. Then what I'm left with is that V, uh, let's see here. So I have a V1 dotted with V1. I can solve for the scalar C1 by dividing through and I get W dotted with V1 all divided by V1 dotted with V1 gives me my value of C1. And so that's what I have to scale by here to get this sum to work. And similarly, C2 is going to be W dotted with V2 divided by V2 dotted with V2. Now, why uh, does this have anything to do with Fourier series? Well, that's a little bit harder to motivate, but if you think about this function f of t, instead of thinking of it as some periodic function, whoops, that's not so periodic. That's, well, that's a hard shape to replicate. I'm going to cheat. All right. There we go. Perfectly periodic function. So um, if I think about this, instead of being as a smooth curve, if I just approximate it by points at equally spaced values, then I can think of f of t as being a vector and I can also think of my cosine and sine functions as being vectors. So instead of thinking of the sine function, let's see, I'm going to get the period here right. So we wanted a sine function like this. So let's say we want to find the best coefficient on the first sine function with omega 1 in there. So what do we need to do? Well, we're going to think of this one as a bunch of discrete dots. And so this f of t that I drew, it's in green, just like the w was. But then the sine function is going to be like the red one. And once I take each of these values, so let's, I'm going to just do this very quickly here. So I can, I can write down this f of t. Instead of writing it as f of t, let's just write it down as f value at t1 and f value at t2 and f value at tn. And then this one is going to be the sine function at t1 and then the sine function at t2 all the way down to the sine function at tn. And these are now vectors. And what does it mean to take a dot product of these long vectors? Well, that would be the sum of f of t1 or ti multiplied by the sine of omega 1 ti summed up from 1 to n over my whole collection of dots. And now if we modify this ever so slightly and we say this vector is actually not just going to be this vector, but multiplied by a dt, then this becomes a Riemann sum and I can replace it with the integral from now, because I'm periodic of period t, I'm just going to go from zero to capital T of f of t multiplied by sine omega one t dt. And this is just like our dot product, but it's a dot product for functions. And that's what we're going to use to do all these projections and figure out the C values, just like we did here, except now we're going to use this idea of integrals instead of dot products. And so um, I will not go through it in a video, but I will post uh, uh, a, a demonstration of this full principle um, online 
And in the next video, I will do a calculation using the formulas that I'll derive on that PDF instead of going through it here. I'll start off the next video just stating those, um, but if you want to go through and figure out how you get those, those will be posted separately. Um, and in the next video, I will actually do an example uh, of calculating a Fourier series.